deal with the second type of input output functions with C language. These functions which we are going to discuss are going to be pertaining for multiple character input and output instructions. Which means that when a question comes of responding a set of characters as your answer. For example, when I ask your name, your name will not be single character. Your name is going to be a set of characters. When you ask your address, it will be a set of characters. When I ask your college name, it will be a set of characters. When such inputs are supposed to be read, in that case, we are supposed to deal with these functions. Let's study the first function that is the input function. As it is said that when I say input, input is always from the device to the memory. That is from the user, it goes to the memory. The function which we use for this task is get s. What exactly this particular getS function does? It reads a set of characters and store into the variable which is allocated for that. So before we start with getS, we should understand what type of variables am I supposed to use for this. Suppose if I define a character variable as a ch. If I define a character variable as a ch. This function reads only one character or stores only one character. But I am supposed to define a variable which can store a set of characters. How do I make this variable to store a set of characters? Should I define multiple variables? No. The answer is no. Because when I define multiple variables, you have to use multiple getCar instructions to read this input. For that, what I will do is, I will use multiple character variable, which means a single character variable is now ready to store a set of characters by defining a character as an array. I'll say char ch bracket, I'll put any constant of my choice, let me say 10. Now when I say char ch of 10, this ch is no more array. This ch is an array, not a variable, an array of 10 spaces. So when I say this, this ch will have 10 spaces to store a set of 10 characters. This entire set can be called as ch. But these individual locations are again referred to the separate name. The first location might be referred as ch of 0. The square brackets are read as of. The second bracket is read as ch of 1. The third location is read as ch of 2 and so on and so on till I reach the last location that is ch of 9 for this declaration. Why 9? Even though size was 10. Since my index, the first number, the in number which you associate with the character variable, we call that as index. The first index is referred as 0, hence the last index will be referred as 9. ch of 0 to ch of 9. Such functions, such variables should be used to use with getS function. Let's see the input operations with getS function. So the syntax goes as I should use getS and within this brackets, I'm supposed to specify a character array. Let's give a simple example to illustrate this syntax. I'll say get s bracket suppose if character is ch of 10 so i'll say ch which means that this get s is now ready to store a set of characters into a variable called as ch where ch is a character array let's see how the input goes into this particular ch i have an example to say this assume that the input goes I say A, B, C and I hit the enter key. Now, the variable ch is allocated how many spaces? 10 spaces. So, these 10 spaces have to be used. Initially, all these 10 spaces are filled with some garbage values. We call them as junk values or unknown values or garbage values. So, what getS does? reads this string till you hit the enter key and stores each of these characters into a character array. It will store the first character into the first location. 
the second character into the second location, the third character into the third location, and what it does is it will automatically append the string with a null character. We call this as a string termination character. We call this as a escape sequence. So a string termination character or a null character. The string termination character or the null character is automatically added by the getS function. What is the purpose of this? Why it is supposed to add up? Don't you feel that it will consume one additional space? Yes. As per the concepts of string, the null character will occupy one additional character. But it plays a very important role when we try to read, when we try to access this particular function. Basically, when I read this particular contents, null character is used as a differentiator to identify the valid input and the garbage values which exist in the array. Anything which appears before null is always an input and anything which appears after null is going to be a garbage values. What if, if I have an input as say a, b, c, 1 and then slash 0 and hit the enter key. Don't feel that if I enter null character, it will read that as a null character. No. In this case, this ch will store the contents in this fashion. The first character is read as a, the second character is read as b, the third character is read as c, the fourth, you might call it as digit 1, but it is ultimately a character 1. Slash 0 is not the character which you are going to uh, be identifying as null character. In this case, it will identify as two separate characters. A slash will occupy one space, zero will occupy one more space, and then a string is automatically appended again with a null character. So in this case, the number of characters are one, two, three, four, five, six are the one which you have entered, and null character is automatically appended with this string. So it means that when I define a character array with the 10 spaces, it is advised to store only 9 characters because 1 will automatically going for null character. So this is about the input function. Now let's deal with the output function. The output function which we use for this task is put s. What exactly this particular function does? As it is said, output function, which means that the value is displayed from the memory to the user. Whatever the contents which are stored into a character array, those contents will be displayed as it is on the screen. Let's try an example to illustrate this particular put s function. So the syntax goes as and then an example as put s bracket me, let me say ch. When I say put as ch, what it does is this contents of character as ch are displayed as it is on the screen one by one till it finds a null character. So put s will always look out for a string denomination character that is null character. Till it finds a null character, it keeps on displaying character by character on the output screen. So suppose if I take up the example of the first one. So what put as ch does with the first example? So what put as does is it takes the first character, checks whether it is null. If not, it will display the character on the screen. So it will display A on the output screen. And then it goes and checks the next character. Is this next character null character? No. Displays the next character. Is this character null character? No. Displays the character. The next character is a null character? Yes. It stops the operation. So basically, put s displays the contents of character array as it is on the screen till it finds a null character. So that's it about the concepts of put s functions. Let us look at a program which will use get s as well as put s functions. We'll try a very simple code. I'll ask you to enter your name on the output screen and I'll just display a hello message followed by your name. Suppose if your name is say ABC, I'll say hello ABC on the screen. But how do I use get s and put s in reality with this? Let's try and identify the program for this. So as usual, the program always begins with the header file, hash include stdio.h. 
Now, get us, put us functions are a part of your stdotH itself. So, let's start with the main task. I'll say void main. Now, as usual, again discuss the input, the process, and the output values. What you're going to read as input? You're going to read a string as input, a set of characters as input. To store this set of characters, what we need to use? Should I use a character variable or should I use a character array? Character variable will be stored, storing only one character, whereas character array stores a set of characters. Yes. So in this case, in the input side, I'll be using a character array. What are the contents which are there in the input character array? The same are supposed to be even displayed on the output side, but with a message, say hello. Let's see how I proceed with this particular task. So I'm supposed to define a character array. Not necessarily that always a character array has to be defined as char ch itself. Let me try a different character array name as char n of 20. Now here, n of 20, the square bracket seven read as of, which means that this n can store a maximum set of how many characters? 19 characters. Even though the size has been specified as 20. Some of you might have guessed as 20 before I spoke that particular number. Basically, the size has been set as 20, but it will read maximum 19 characters because one character has to be preserved for null character, that is string termination character. Hence, what we do is we read only 19 characters for the super side. Right? Okay, you can have input less than 19 characters also. But the maximum space is 19 characters. Let's proceed and ask the user to enter the name. So I'll display a message printf enter your name. I'll read this particular name. So I'll read the name using the function which we are studying that is get s the name of the character. The name of the character in this case is n. So I'll say get s n. So I'd use the function get s to read the name and store into the array called as n. If my input goes as a, b, c, so in this case, n will store a, b, c, and then, yes, you got it right, that is slash zero, null character. Now, I'm supposed to just display this particular name with a welcome message. I can say welcome so-and-so or hello so-and-so. What are the name which you have entered? We are, we are still conversant with the printf instruction to display the message. You can use a different instruction. Rather than using printf, I can use put us to display messages. I'll say put us, double quotes. Here, I'll say hello. Which means that this message will be displayed as it is on the screen. You might wonder that I have been using a printf to do this task. You can even use a put s as alternate for this. Basically, the advantage of using put s is that after displaying the name or displaying the message, the cursor will automatically roll down to the next line. When I said printf in this instruction, after saying enter your name, after saying enter your name, the cursor was left on the same line. You could have entered the name next to this particular message on the screen. But in this case, when I say put s hello, it displays a message called as hello on the screen and then rolls down the cursor to the next line. So after hello, if you want to display the name next to hello, then you can't use put s, you have to use printf. So here, I'll be using put s hello so that the cursor will roll down to the next line. And after that, I'll use the actual purpose of put s. So here, I'll say put s bracket, I'll say n. What this function does? This function will display the content of n as it is on the screen followed by, uh, preceded by a message called as hello. It will display all the characters of n as it is till it finds a null character. Assume that we have entered a name called as say Aditya. I'll ask you to enter your name. Assume that the name is Aditya. So the standard output goes something of the sort. So if I say enter your name, now, as printf, we leave the cursor on the same line. So you can enter the input at this place. Let me try the input as, say, A, D, I, T, Y, A. 
So now this entire string, when I type the string and hit the enter key, this string goes into n. So first location is filled with a, second location with the d, i, t, y, a, and so on, and then append the string with null character. On the output screen, how the output appears. So put as hello will display a message as hello. Will it leave the cursor on the same line? No, the cursor will automatically roll down to the next line, and then the contents of n will be displayed. N is Aditya. So here I'll say A D I T Y A. Will it not display all the 20 characters? No, because after this it finds a null character. So here I'd used putes to display the contents of an array, and getes is used to read the contents from the user and store into an array. So that is about the concepts of getes and putes functions. Thank you.